So this tutorial is for painting of the T45 power armor. It's the piece from the Fantasy Flight Games Fallout, um, but the techniques used could be used on any model representing the power armor of Fallout. From a black base coat, cover the entire model in silver. I used thrash metal here from Scale 75, but lead belcher from Games Workshop would equally work well. Wash the entire model with null and oil, being careful to make sure it doesn't settle too heavily in any one part of the model. When the wash is dry, then dry brush the entire model with a light silver colour. I've used speed metal from Vallejo 75, but something like Necron compound would also work. As this is a fallout model, it's almost obligatory to add some weathering. So for rust effects, start with a very thin down wash of scrag brown, picking out areas where rust would form um, in recesses at the point of meeting of different plates. Nice and thin because you can always add to it with the second layer. Once you're happy with the placement of the scrag brown, then the rust can be accentuated first with Troll Slayer Orange, aiming to cover a smaller area than the Scrag Brown and further into the recesses. The rust effect is completed using small amounts of Fire Dragon Bright at the centre of the rust pockets. Um, the three tones merge into one another but really do uh, add to the effect of the rust. Pick out the metallic framework of the side of the gun in corn red. Uh, for the colours of this, I looked for uh, source images online for the Gatling laser, um, which gives you an idea of what colours to be painting where. Remember at this stage to also pick out the opening wheel thing on the back of the armour in the same colour. The barrels are then picked out using Castellan Green. You can avoid the shaded recesses with this colour and then you don't need to wash this section again, which just saves a bit of time. The Gatling laser has small yellow elements on the barrels. Now, I didn't try to do a straight one-to-one -one copy, but doing the vertical yellow lines on each side gives it a bit of detail. Starting first with Corax White to pick these lines out. Then using Thin Down Flash Gets Yellow, you're basically kind of washing these lines to pull them towards yellow. Um, this is actually a much quicker way of doing yellow over a dark color than trying to layer up with yellows, because you'll be there forever. and to tidy up the edges of the yellow areas with the original Castellan Green. Um, this is easy to overpaint because any overspilled yellow will be quite light um, and just gives it a much clearer and cleaner finish. Mm -hmm. 
Looking at images of the gun, some of the metalwork is darker, so these areas were picked out with an overpainting of Black Templar contrast paint. The yellow cabling is first painted with Avalanche Sunset, and the rivets holding the cable onto the gun aren't modelled, so just leave small gaps for the Black Templar in between the yellow to give this illusion. The red and yellow areas are then washed with Agrax Archade. Green areas are then edge highlighted using Lauren Forest. The red is highlighted with Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, this is quite a thin paint, so may require two or more coats to get full opacity. cabling is highlighted with Uriel Yellow. The joins in between the segments of the power armor are painted with Doom Bull Brown. The tubing around the helmet and the two pipes that run around the back of the power armor are picked out with Rhinox Hide. The segments painted Doom Wool Brown are washed with Agrax Earthshade. The tubing to the helmet is washed with Null Oil. The tubing is highlighted using Bane Blade Brown. The lamp on the helmet is base painted with Stegodon Scale Green. The first layer of Sotek Green is placed at the centre of this area, trying to avoid the corners but covering most of the lamp. And this is then finished with Temple Guard Blue dotted into the centre. The eye lenses on the helmet are base coated with Caliban Green. The first highlight of Warpstone Green is then applied to most of the lens, trying to avoid the corners but covering most of the material.
the lenses are completed with dots of moot green at the centre of the lens. And this is the final result. As this is a piece for a board game, you may or may not want to base it, but if you do, just make sure to base it in the same way as the, the rest of the models. Thanks for watching, and please check out my other videos, and I'll aim to do more of the models from this board game in the near future.